Welcome back to the JSFL. I am Commissioner slash Commentator Joshua Hexel, and it is the end of the regular season for the JSFL here. And we have what a week 12 that was. And we have teams that made the playoffs, teams that didn't make the playoffs, and our new relocation status team. So, first of all, I would like to introduce the Atlanta Predators going from Miami to Atlanta. So, not that big of a drive. So, yeah, everyone's getting relocated to Atlanta, and your Predators will be your new team. Atlanta, just while action has come your way. So, you'll see your team season one. I mean, season two next year. Now, let's go into week 12. How the games went. Starting off the season, starting off Thursday night primetime, our last of the regular season, we had the New York businessmen finishing off third season at Minneapolis, the Fishers. The Fishers lose that game as New York goes to three and nine, and the biz uh, and Minneapolis falls to four and eight, and those are their seasons three and nine for the businessmen, four and eight for the Fishers. Good game there. Then you had your Sunday one o'clock games and four star power. Power setting some of their starters, including Taylor Little. Um, Hugh Brooks didn't get many snaps this week. Odiselli sat out, and some defensive players. So then, Houston barely wins against Detroit, as the Power lose going six and six. The Enforcers win going seven and five. So Detroit made the six, the third seed as well. We'll get into that later, actually. Then, the other 1 o'clock game, Earthquake and Gila Monsters, this was the best, probably, well, it was supposed to be the best game of the week, one of the most anticipated, because we got to see which team would get that 6 seed. Would it be the LA Earthquake, or would it be the Gila Monsters from Phoenix? And Phoenix won, so the rookie Brian Tepps is leading the Phoenix Gila Monsters to the playoffs, and they will fight, we'll see it in a little bit, but they go 8-4 to end off the record, and LA... With the many losses they had at the end of the regular season, doesn't squeak the playoffs seven and five. Then the four fifteen games. The first one, the Pirates at the way. Cleveland goes to Miami. Miami's last game for at least a long, long time, because we won't get to see Miami football for a while at least. It'll be a long time. So yeah, and then the Pirates lose that one. Miami won. They actually played really well. Jones had three touchdowns. I think it was a pretty good game. Just, if they could have done that good old season, maybe we would have seen a new team. But, no. So, yeah. Miami won, and they end up the season 3-9. And, and then Cleveland goes 4-8. Four, four and eight. Yep. So, then there was... No, Cleveland went 3-9, my bad. So then, there was the... Six, the other 4-15 game, the Natives and the Wind. This one had a lot to do with who got that first and second seed. And the win to beat the Natives going 9-3 and three and putting the Natives at 9-3. and three. Let's see which team made the playoffs. But the only two teams at 9-3, they were the best two teams of the regular season. Let's see who was the best in a little bit here. Then your Monday night match up for Monday night primetime. You had the Charlotte Pats 5-7. They already had the East clinched against the New Orleans musicians who were fighting for that spot in the playoffs. Well, the spot in the bye. And they lost to the Charlotte Bad Charlotte playing great football. If they keep it like that, they should be flying through the playoffs and maybe seeing a JSFL championship appearance. So they finish off season 5-7, New Orleans 8-4. and four. So now let's go to who got those playoff spots. Alright. Playoffs. You're in the hunt was number two in Houston, four seven five. Number one, LA Earthquake seven five. Great seasons from those two. They should be able to improve in the offseason. Number six is the Phoenix Kill Monsters eight and four. They squeak into the playoffs. They only do get the six seed, but they get the six seed. They are going to be playing your third seed, Detroit Power. Who got the third seed? Obviously, no surprise. They already had it launched, locked up, I think, week 10. So, Phoenix and Detroit will be your Saturday night, Saturday afternoon matchup. That would be the first matchup you see in Detroit. So, yeah. The fifth seed is New Orleans. We said that 8-4. They will be going to Charlotte. Charlotte. 
So the Vats will be taking on the musicians for two weeks in a row. So they went to New Orleans last week. Now New Orleans is going to Charlotte this week for the playoffs. So we'll see if New Orleans loses again and Charlotte can win again. So same teams, you should have a little more note. Should be able to do some more. I think this should be maybe a little bit more of a low scoring game because they just fought each other, and know each other a little more. So then your second seed is the drum roll. Kansas City win. They got the second seed. They barely lost to the Seattle Nays. They did win against Seattle Nays in week 12, but that didn't boost their score enough to take Seattle Nays in full comparison. So your first seed, Seattle Natives, they will be playing the worst team of. Seed wise, which advances in the wild card, and then Charlotte and New Orleans will be Sunday evening at four at six thirty. Yeah. That's that. That's your playoff picture this year. Let's go into the MVP. Right, actually, let's count down the top twenty-five players of this season, and it is twenty-five. Yep, we're doing top 25. So the NFL has their top 100. And you thought, think how many teams of how many NFL teams there were. If you count 100 in the JSF, if NFL's has 100. So out of those players, it would be 25 for the JSF because we're a smaller league. The math is right, trust me. Okay, 25. Barely making the cut. I think he deserves this. He had the best receiver award. I think. Yes, he did. It is Mr. Sam Johnson. Of the New York businessman. Great season. Let's look at those stats. All right. For Sam Johnson, he had 57 catches, 695 yards, and five touchdowns. Johnson was a great player for New York, especially when Grenett got on the field. He's targeted Johnson quite a bit after the catches, you can see. Yards, really good. And touchdowns, he, he tied the league leaders. There was a lot of receivers that had five touchdowns. So, yeah. Johnson, great season. Deserves that number one that should boost his rankings, and he should be a really great force because he's gained, he's in his prime, and he's getting to the end of it. So, Johnson, I think he'll have his best year next season for the New York, and he should be really good. Then you have, at number 24, Carlos Young QB, LA Earthquake. Not a cornerback from Kansas City, I believe. Oh, well, he's not even going to be a win after this year. But for the playoffs, he is. So let's look at Carlos Young's stats. 246 completions, 359 attempts, 2,569 yards, 11 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, no round game. He's an older QB. He kind of made this list because most QBs, well, some QBs did. He had some playmakers around him, which kind of helps. To be honest, Young isn't the best player. He's old. But he had some nice flashes, and he did some good, pretty good stats. And he did go over 10 interceptions, which a lot of QBs did, so you got to give that to him. And he had over 10 touchdowns, so not bad. Good job, Carlos Young. You made the top 25 this year. Then 23 is Sheldon Romero, tight end, can no, Seattle Natives. So Romero makes the list, as he should. Great target for Kermit Poe this season. Let's look at the stats. He was 67 catches, 664 yards, and 6 touchdowns. No rushing game. Not many tight ends did. I think it was like one. So Romero, great target. He always got open. He was just a great force for, for Seattle. A lot of plays came through him, but also, again, on that offense, you had Dallas Crawford. Um, you had most, most of the time Timothy Morgan for at least half the season. Then Fred Williams broke out too. Cole knew he also did decent on receiving, I believe. Yeah, he did decent. He did pretty good on receiving. I think it was like third. And so yeah, so many targets. And Sean Romero still makes the list. Gotta give it to the tight end. What a great job he had this year. One and two is Sheldon Larson's tight end, Cleveland Pirates. So these two are fighting neck and neck. It must have been. Let's look at Larson's stats. So Larson actually was like one of the only targets, so a lot of people focused him. That makes it even more impressive. Because the receiver game for Cleveland wasn't that good, and then you had a rookie at running back, so he did decent on the catch game though. So Larson, 68 catches, 743 yards, and six touchdowns. So a little more yards, one more catch. So those two pretty close in stats, but Larson, if you ever watched a game with him in it, he was just he's so speedy, he's quick. 
He is agile, and he's a pretty agile, yeah, agile tight end. He's just a great player. Larson, I hope you have a good, ye good years in Cleveland. Do good, buddy. And if you decide to go to another team, I wouldn't blame you. Cleveland's not that good. Maybe they'll do better this next year. They might pick up a new QB, or and they need to get a halfback too because Evans is gone. And then let's look at the next number twenty-one. It is Scotty Huber, QB, Minneapolis Fishers. So Huber, believe it or not, had a lot of yards. I mean. He might have not been the most accurate QB throwing 13 interceptions, but 16 touchdowns, not bad. He also ran for two touchdowns, which is second in the league. It's surprising for Russian QBs. There was not many more quarterbacks this season. He had 238 completions, 343 attempts, 2,944 yards, second in passing yards. And we already talked about the touchdown interception ratio. So he did throw over more than 10 interceptions, but I think... The touchdowns kind of helped him on that. Rushing touchdowns helped. He had a lot of targets. Carlton Sanchez, Wilbur Lamb, Lowell Snyder, and Ronaldo Hoskins was the best receiving back. So, I mean, this guy just had options. And not one of the best QBs, just like Carlos Young, but he had options to throw to. And so you can't really not put him on the list because he at least made the throws. So, Hoover hits 21. Then we got number. Now we have to get. Now we get number 20. 20 players left. And it's the rookie Alfred Norris running back at Houston Enforcers. So the rookie gets on the list. We never saw him in the MVP race, but he gets into the top 20, which is pretty good. Especially for a rookie, I'd say. So let's look at those stats. He had 140, 193 attempts, 885 yards, 3 touchdowns, 31 broken tackles, and no catching game. Wow, hmm, well, different. But Norris, with the O line he had, which was not that good, and receivers for Carl White weren't that great. Plus, he was throwing a lot of interceptions. Just gotta give them. He was just a beast on the ground. Might not have a good enough, good, the best. Um, might not have the best season on the ground, only having 885 yards. But he fought for those 885 yards. He had close to a thousand yards. But you think about some of these backs that placed higher than him. Um, like Colin Yu, he had all those receivers that were on the field. So he, the pass game could open up for him to rush lanes and stuff. And Alfred Norris didn't really have that with the struggling Houston team. So props to him. That might be his best season for at least a while because Evans is coming and Howard Morgan should be more productive this season. But good job to Alfred Norris. He squeaked in at top 20. Now let's go to number 19. We're past the 20s now. Quarterback, Joe Parker of Kansas City Wind. So Joe Parker. Let's look at those stats for him. Two th no, 224 completions out of 346 attempts. 2,645 yards. 14 touchdowns. 7 interceptions. So not a bad season. Under 10 interceptions and above 10 touchdowns. Which, um, he had all two touchdowns less than Hoover. But four touch, four interceptions less, so which helps Parker, and he had less yards. I think a little more completions. So I think these those three were like really close in actual points. But yeah, so very close, and that's how that worked. Number eighteen, William Torres, linebacker, Kansas City win. The veteran getting on the board, and let's look at those stats. 52 solo tackles, 17 assists, 21 tackles for a loss, 14 sacks, an interception, and a forced fumble. So Torres, great, pretty good tackles, not that many assists, great tackles for a loss. He actually, we'll get into that stat later for him. 14 sacks, an interception, and a forced fumble. Sacks, great. He might not have the most, but look at the sacks. That could go. He's going to Detroit next season, so I'm hoping he keeps his form, even though he'll decrease a little bit. And an interception and fumble, so he even got turnovers. Like, maybe not the most, but that's a pretty good player. And a veteran, he's still going strong out there. Torres, no doubt he, he made the list. 
So let's go to number 18 now. And number 18 is... No, number 17. My bad. Chet Wood. Tight end. Phoenix Scale Monsters. So our person that no doubt led tight ends in receiving touchdowns with nine makes the list. And he had also 72 catches, the most in the league. 728 yards, nine touchdowns. No rushing game, but do you see those stats? I think he leads every tight end in almost every category. Besides yards, but yards which I think is Jesse Flowers for New Orleans. Well, that's just great. He was productive, obviously, in the end red zone because he just made all those catches. No break, probably. Couldn't get it done, and Hank Wu can't carry the whole load, so Brian touched the rookie. He, you know, rookies look a lot towards those tight ends, and he looked Chet Wood a lot this season. So great job for Chet Wood. And now we go to top 16. 16. Roland Lemus of the LA Earthquake. So Roland Lemus, the best edge rusher. Well, the best edge rusher. He was the best edge rusher on this list. He's the only edge rusher to make the top 25. So, Levis, let's look at those stats. LA Earthquake. He got 42 solo tackles, 22 assists, 8 tackles for a loss, 21.5 sacks, and a forced fumble, and a safety. So, what a year for Roland Levis. A safety, one of the only players to do that. A forced fumble, so pretty good in the turnover game. Not the best, like William Torres, but he did it. 21.5 sacks. Most in the league, obviously everyone knew it was going to happen. So no spoilers there. Eight tackles for a loss, nope, not that bad. And the tackles weren't that great. But those turnovers and the sacks helped him, and he should be. He's only in the young part of his career, so he should be blossoming in L.A., and that should be a threat for most tackles to worry about. So Lemus wins that. 15, we're in our top 15 players. And we have number 15 taking it, Ronaldo Smith, linebacker, New York businessman. A little surprising he falls this low, but it's harder to get points as a defensive player. Sadly. Sadly. 66 solo tackles, 49 assists, 8 tackles for a loss. Here goes the good part. 5 sacks, not that great, but here comes the really good part. 4 interceptions and 4 forced fumbles. Amazing. He had... I think the most turnovers in the league. Pretty de decent sacks, not the best. But the tackles make up for it, and the tackle for loss is okay. But Ronaldo Smith was a machine for the New York businessman. And he just had a great season, and he should be doing great for Seattle, helping that defense tremendously. And him and Stefan Hernandez on the linebacking core? Woof. I don't want to be playing Seattle anytime soon. Now, number 14. Our highest ranked defensive player. Yes, Ronald Smith wasn't the best. It was actually David Medina, linebacker, Detroit Power. So, one of my players gets on there, David Medina. And another player coming to my team is William Torres. So, two linebackers in the top 25. Top 20, actually. But let's look at, stop bringing about my team and looking at stats. Detroit Power had David Medina, and he had 66 solo tackles, same as. Um, Ronaldo Smith, 41 assists, 2 tackles for a loss, not that great. 1.5 sacks, 3 interceptions, 2 forced fumbles, and 2 touchdowns, which really helps his stats boost. Good tackles, not that good tackle for a loss, not that great on the sacks, but the, um, fumbles, interceptions, and touchdowns really help the person on defense. Especially touchdowns, I give, like, 20 points for that. So... Instead of like 10 points for interception and fumble. So that really helped him. They also had the most touchdowns in the league with two. That was the most because it's hard to get a touchdown on defense. So yeah, Medina wins it. He wins best defense. Well, he's the best defensive person on the top 25. 13. Quarterback, Seth Skies, New Orleans Musicians. So the QB with the least amount of interceptions in the league is. Surprisingly in the top, not surprisingly in the top 10, I should say. Let's look at the stats for Skies, and they were great. With the small, and the bad receiver, well, not bad, but he had, overall, they were not the worst receiving court, trust me. 
But overall wise, they were the worst receiving core in the league. But he made them look like 90 stars and 80 stars out there. So guys, 221 completions out of 340 attempts, 2,781 yards, 20 touchdowns, or only one interception. So every 20 touchdowns, he only threw one interception. And I think it was a tip-off drill, too. So he's a veteran. He's getting an age. He'll probably degree, decrease. So his touchdowns will probably start dropping, and the interceptions might rise a little bit. But this, what a great season for him. No doubt, top 13. Wait, no, he did not get top 13. He got top 14. No, top 13. Now we're getting to the top 10, almost 12. Second best rookie on this list. It is Ed Evans running back Cleveland Pirates. He's going to Houston next year, though. So let's look at the stats for Evans. There was 219 attempts, 916 yards, 6 touchdowns, and 33 broken tackles. In the receiving game, one receiving touchdown and 50 receiving yards in the game. To get receiving points for a halfback, they have 50 receiving yards in the game to get one. And then, yeah. So, he did pretty good. More, more yards than Norris. More touchdowns. And then Bowman Towers, I think, were going to do more in the receiving game. So, Evans did really good. He got on the list. Not much to say about him. Great rookie season. This isn't my own bias. This is also awful list. It's point based. I didn't make it at all. Eleven is Joey Adams of the Charlotte Bats. So Adams didn't break out through until like the end of the season, kind of. That's when they start. When Charlotte started finally getting the wins. 175 attempts, 1,044 yards, 7 touchdowns, 1, no, 33 broken tackles, and 50 receiving yards in a game. It's not the best receiving days for Adams, but the attempts were really low because he didn't get used. Gary Weed was, some, was getting used in the beginning of the season for some reason. 1,044 yards, he was doing great on the ground game. Again, wasn't started until early. I think if he would have been started really early, he would have been broken out. Seven touchdowns, bad, good. 33 broken tackles, great. And the receiving yards, great. Not much to say about him. Great season. Now we're getting to our top 10. For the, the top 25. Number 10, it is Willie Rogers from the Kansas City win. Let's look at Rogers' season. He had 219 attempts, 1,028 yards, 5 touchdowns, 33 broken tackles. A receiving touchdown over 50 yards twice. So, Rodgers was injured for two weeks, so he only played 10 games, and he still makes number 10. So, great for him. A little less yards than Adams. A little less touchdowns. A little one less broken tackle. But the receiving yards were better. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe add more times where yards were like, when they average more, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. Good to see it for Willie Rogers. Number nine. Julio Jokes, Phoenix Gill Monsters. So, Jokes, the second best back to find the end zone. Having a lot of touchdowns that helps the halfback. Julio Jokes, 96 attempts, 549 yards, 11 touchdowns, 19 broken tackles, over two 50 receiving yard games. Three touchdowns and over one receiving, 100 receiving yard game. So great in the receiving game, great on the touchdowns, not in the best in yardage or broken tackles, but the receiving and touchdowns, just he was a great player for Phoenix. When the offensive passing game couldn't get down, he got down, down on the ground and jog. What a good companion he was. So now we got. The MVP, oh, no, my bad. Number eight. The last rookie to make it on here was Brian Tepps, quarterback, Phoenix Gill Monsters. So, Phoenix, they get Tepps on here with his great season he had. His rookie season, he's leading his team to the playoffs. We'll see how they do. He had 266 completions, two, 367 attempts, 
2,712 yards, 20 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, and over 50 rushing yards in a game. So, not that many interceptions. Only 5 more than Skies, and he's a veteran. So, it wasn't bad at all. A lot of touchdowns, a lot of yards, and he led the league in completions. So, just a great season for Teps. He ranks number 8 in your, in, in your Jace Fells Top 25. Number seven, Owen Castles, running back, New Orleans musicians. So Castles hits here at number seven. Yes, we're getting into the elite quarterback and running back range. So Castles, 229 attempts, 1,058 yards, six touchdowns, 30 broken tackles, over 50 receiving yards in a game, and three receiving touchdowns. So he had a lot of his shiny moments in the receiving game and running game. When it was overtime, and that helped him a lot because New Orleans relied on him in the overtime area. And decent touchdowns, great yards, pretty good broken tackles. Just a solid season from Castles, and we get to number seven. No, number six. Our second ranked quarterback on the list is Kermit Poe, Seattle Natives. And I will get to why he isn't the best QB on here. Just hold your horses, I know him again. Killed right now. 262 completions out of 355 attempts. 3,250 yards. 23 touchdowns. 6 interceptions. So he led the league in touchdowns and yards. Pretty good at completions. No running game. At all. That's a big factor. Fa touchdowns are... Throwing touchdowns are 5 points. Running touchdowns are 10 points. Just keep that in mind. But a great season from Kerr Poe. He also had a lot of targets. I'm not discrediting Poe at all. Love him. Five is Ronaldo Hoskins, the Minneapolis Fishers. The only, uh, geez, the second. There's only two Minneapolis Fishers players on here. Hoskins was the better one. Uber also made it on the list. I forgot. I was about to say it was the only Minneapolis Fisher to make it on, but that's not. Hoskins, 204 attempts, 1,035 yards, four touchdowns, 34 broken tackles. But over five games with 50 plus receiving yards and four receiving touchdowns. That helped him a lot. And then the yards are great, touchdowns okay, broken tackles good. Just that's why he ranked higher than Castle. Number four, Ross Williams, LA Earthquake. So Williams hits the list at number four. The three players above him just had a great season. He, not discrediting at all, he had a great season as well. Just not as good. 254 attempts, 1,403 yards, second, barely losing to Taylor Little. He was actually catching up, which scares me. Seven touchdowns, 43 broken tackles, and 50 plus receiving yards in a game. So, Williams had a great season, great, good touchdowns, great broken tackles, great yards, and. He was the main part of that LA Earthquake offense. So great season for Ross Williams. Number three is Sean Richardson. Detroit Power. Yes, I will explain to you why he is the number one QB on this list. And number three. There's no bias, remember. It goes all off points, not me. 235 completions out of 267 attempts, so he had the best passer completion in the league. 2,652 yards, 20 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. Less than. Three less touchdowns than Poe, and f over five more, and one less interception than Poe. Eight rushing touchdowns on the ground and over 50 rushing yards in the game. Eight rushing touchdowns on the ground. So remember how I said rushing touchdowns were more than passing touchdowns? He had eight rushing touchdowns. Poe had none. And that single-handedly puts why he had way more points than Poe, and was two more ahead of him. Three more, actually. And then his throwing yards weren't terrible, and neither were the completions. Plus, a great completion percentage, so that's why Richardson just a great season. Plus, he had like zero targets besides Otis Stelle and Hugh Brooks. Theodore Norman they, and those other two, I can't remember the names, Walter Pratt and Roger Wills, I think. But they were not that good of overall receivers. But yeah, so that's why Richardson is there. Colton Yu, and number two is Colton Yu, Seattle Natives running back. This one surprised me the whole season, but I took a little more look at his um, 
stats, and it's a great stat sheet for here for you. 235 attempts, 1,124 yards, 8 touchdowns, 43 broken tackles, 50 plus receiving yards, and 3 receiving touchdowns, and a game over 100 plus receiving yards. So you, great rushing stats, not the best rushing stats, but the receiving stats were great too, which Ross Williams and Taylor Little did not have. Well, actually, Taylor Little did have receiving yards that were pretty good. But no other back besides those, Paul New and Taylor Little had a great rushing, good rushing game and a good receiving game, besides Rondo Hoskins, which wasn't the best rushing game. So, yeah. Then, number one, your MVP this season, Taylor Little Detroit Power wins it. For the first ever season, let's look at Taylor Little's stats. He won it by a lot. Let's look at his stats. 246 attempts, 1,493 yards, 13 rushing touchdowns, 50 broken tackles, over two games with 50 plus receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns. So the receiving yards, not that great, but let's look at these rushing stats. 13 touchdowns, led the league, 50 broken tackles, led the league, 1,493 rushing yards, led the league, 246 attempts, second in the league behind Ross Williams, who was almost beat him. It's just no question. He wins MVP. No one that beats him. So that is your and your Jason Bell's top 25. That took a long time and my voice is sore. Power rankings. I'm not going to go over too much of this because my voice is sore. 12th, Atlanta Predators. 11th, Cleveland Pirates. 10, New York Businessmen. 9, Minneapolis Fishers. 8, Charlotte Bats. 7, Detroit Power. 6, Houston Enforcers. 5th, LA Earthquake. 4th, Phoenix Steel Monsters, third, New Orleans Musicians, second, Kansas City Wind, one, Seattle Natives. All work, goes off points. There you go. Now let's go into the MVP and record. Well, not records. Your awards this season. Winning MVP is Taylor Little of the Detroit Power. We already talked about him. Rookie of the Year is Brian Taps. We already talked about him. Great season, Chaps. Good job. Offensive Player of the Year is Taylor Little. He won MVP. No question. Defensive player of the year, we already talked about it. David Medina, good job. Two players from the Detroit Power, may I add. Best QB, another Detroit Power, Sean Richardson. We already went over that because we already went over top 25, so a lot of the stuff we already went over. Best running back, Terry Little, already went over him. Best receiver, Sam Johnson. If you don't remember, we actually already went over him. He was number 25 in the league. Best tight end, Chet Wood, already went over him, too. Uh, he was number 17. Best D lineman, Rule and Lemus. Already went over him. He was number 16. Best linebacker, David Medina. Already went over him. And then best DB. There's no DBs in the top 25. So we actually go, have to go over Mr. Byron Baxter. He wins the defensive back of the year. And he was on Phoenix Gill Monsters team. And they have Carlos Young, I think, coming to the secondary next year. So what a duo that will be for Phoenix. And the secondary should be pretty good for them. So let's look at Byron Baxter's stats. And this surprised the living heck out of me. And that, um, I think what did this for him was this week. He had three interceptions this week. And if it weren't for those interceptions, I'm pretty sure it would have been William Pats would have got it. He was a little bit behind him. And Brady Garnett was also third. He got third. So, yeah. But Baxter, what it had he did this week, definitely won him in. But let's look at this, the season stats. 39 tackles, solo tackles, 27 assists, 4 tackles for loss, a sack, and 7 interceptions leading the league in interceptions. Those interceptions, there are 10 points an interception, and the stats weren't bad on anything else, so we got it. Simple as that. Baxter, great season. All right, and records. QBR, so this goes into the record book until someone beats it. So, uh, all these are going to be season one. QB yards, current Poe, 3,250, Seattle Native season one. Quarterback touchdowns, current Poe, 23, Seattle Native season one. Quarterback completions, Brian Taps, 265, Phoenix Skill Monsters season one. Quarterback attempts, Carl White, 388, Houston Enforcers season one. Quarterback pressure points, Sean Richardson, 85, Stripe Howard, Season 1. Running back records. 
Running back yards, Sarah Little, 1,493. Detroit Power, Season 1. Running back broken tackles, Sarah Little, 50. Detroit Power, Season 1. Running back attempts, Ross Williams, 254. LA Earthquake, Season 1. Running back touchdowns, Sarah Little, 13. Detroit Power, Season 1. Running back receiving points, Ronaldo Hoskins, 65. Minneapolis Fishers, Season 1. Wide receiver records. Wide receiver yards, your winner is Wilbur Lamb, 786. Minneapolis Fishers, Season 1. Wide receiver reception, Sam Johnson, 57. New York Businessman, Season 1. Wide receiver touchdowns, there was no one that won this because all of them had five. A lot of them had five, so I'm not going to put like 20 of them that had five in there. So no one gets this record yet. Tight end receiving yards, Jesse Flower, 762, New Orleans Musicians, Season 1. Tight end receptions, Chet Wood, 72, Pink Monsters, Season 1. Tight end touchdowns, Chet Wood, Pink Monsters, he had nine, Season 1. O-line most given sacks of the season. Sorry to put you on the spot like this. Mitch Rines. Oh, sure. I forgot to put in how many sacks he gave. My bad. Mitch Rines had given, let's look. I think it was 15. Atlanta Predators. Mitch Rines gave up 15 sacks. So that's the most sacks given. Miami Wave. Season 1. They will go in as Miami Wings. That's what they were called that season. Not Atlanta. Defense. Solo tackles. Henry Virgin, 75. Charlotte Pats. Season 1. Assist. Ronaldo Smith, 49. New York Businessman. Season 1. Tackles for loss. William Torres, 21. Kansas City wins. Season 1. Stacks. Rowan Lennis, 21.5. LA Earthquake. Season 1. Interceptions. Byron Baxter, 7. Phoenix to Go Monsters. Season 1. Force fumbles, Nicholas Stone slash Ronaldo Smith. There was only two of them, so I did put them in. Seven. No, wait. Four. Detroit Power Season 1. Years Business Season 1. Touchdowns, David Medina 2. Detroit Power Season 1. So, that is it here for the JSFL regular season. It's over. It's wild card weekend here. When I see you next in the JSFL, I will see you when we the Detroit Power are hosting the Phoenix Gale Monsters. And I'll be representing Detroit. Well, I won't be playing, but it'll be a good game to watch. I'll be commenting as always. See you from the JSFL.